Hi everybody, Deborah and Bandit here. The video you are about to see today is from my Friday Night Live chat and it has been edited so that you can watch the condensed version. Enjoy! My last viewer question of the night. Alternatives to the desert. Everybody offered a lot of alternatives this last week and I really appreciated alternatives to transportation, alternatives to AC, and now alternatives to the desert. So Robert Birch again, he said, maybe rethink your home base. Nevada anytime has really got me scratching my head. Well, Robert did a wonderful article on legal residency in all the states and, and the pros and cons. And Nevada has a lot going for it when it comes to making it your home state as a nomad or a full-timer. So there are a lot of reasons for that. And then he says, I guess my question to you, is this nomadic lifestyle by choice or circumstances? And I've already answered that, and, and, and we covered that just a little bit a, a moment ago, but in, in, in other videos. So I'm going to tie that in to the desert and the heat. Why, why the desert, and, and there are alternatives to the desert, and other than being broke down and waiting on a new mechanic, why am I here in the desert? And, and I think that's a good, good question. I had a lot of people asking me that. And so, um, you know, this global pandemic hit everybody. And I was in Alabama. I had been with, with my friends Chuck and Letty for 47 days, and I needed to come home. And Nevada is my state of, uh, my resident state. And they needed to go to, they, I was in Alabama with them at their beach home, their, their vacation home, and they needed to go home, which was another state. So, um, you know, I, I needed to ride out the pandemic, and uh, I, at that time, I, I got here in June, nobody knew what to expect, and I drove straight from Alabama to here, I made a couple of stops to rest, and, and I didn't go in anywhere, I was fully stocked, I paid for the gas at the pumps, and uh, so it was, it was a beeline to get home, basically. And I had to make a decision in May while I was crossing, you know, traveling across the country, I saw, I have family in Texas. Y'all saw Elizabeth on here earlier. And, um, you know, but they, it, and, and my sister would have uh, let me stay in her driveway. But you know, when you're, that's called mooch docking, <laughs> even though I would have paid her for the electricity and everything, that's called mooch docking. And, and you know, it, I, she has wonderful neighbors and she's lived there forever. But she also has four adults living in that house and some of her grandkids with her. And so there's multiple vehicles there already. And I didn't want to take a chance on her neighbors getting upset. And that's always something that you need to be aware of if you're going to be doing a situation like that. And um, I have family in Arkansas that would have been on my way. And I asked them about staying in their driveway because they, they have a, a huge, um, I think, it, I don't remember how much land their house is on, but it, it would not, I would not have been in their way. Um, and um, they, I get that they were concerned about COVID. I promised them that I wouldn't come in the house. I had no need to come in the house. I would just need to run an extension cord uh, somewhere. And that was it. I was self-sufficient. And uh, they were too scared of the virus and they declined to let me come there. And uh, that one's not going down easy with me yet. I hadn't gotten over that. Uh, so um, that was not an option. Chuck and Letty, even though I'd been in, in, in quarantine with them, or not quarantine, but self-isolation, for 47 days, they invited me to go with them to their home. But you know, I, I'd already imposed on them enough. They, they, I was only supposed to be there a few days, and then the coronavirus hit, and I just, it's like the guest that never goes away, and I, and I, and I won't ever be able to thank them enough, and, and Chuck is the one, I bought the air conditioner and the supplies and everything, but Chuck installed my AC for me to make sure that I would be, um, have when I could get somewhere where I could plug in, that I had AC, so I was not about to impose on them anymore. Checked into New Mexico State Parks, but at the time, they were shut down. Most state parks everywhere were shut down. So it's not like that was going to be an option for me. And in Colorado, uh, you know, there were a lot of people that were camping in Colorado, but there were a lot of places like BLM, National Forest, all the places that I know to do that I've learned on five years of boondocking out here. I also had my friends telling me they were routinely getting kicked out. I also had friends that were pay, had paid in RV parks 
and the states changed the regulations and at that time they were getting kicked out of RV parks because they were from out of state and the RV park owners had nothing to do with it. It, it it just things were crazy so I just more and more felt like I wanted to come back to my state of residency which is Nevada of course um, I looked at Arizona again because I'm familiar with all of the uh, boondocking and everything there and along the way you guys if I passed an RV park while I was driving I would slow down enough to get their phone number and I would call them and and I got to tell you nine times out of ten they told me they weren't taking new people and um, th that and, and I couldn't afford it anyway a weekly or a monthly rent right there but I, I tried all the way across the entire country I tried Wyoming I'm familiar with Wyoming because that's where Robert's kids are and I've been there four summers in a row with him didn't get to make it this summer my first summer to miss in a while and, and I'm missing them but I, I called all of the places that I know in in Wyoming and a lot of the RV parks and everything that I knew there and and again they weren't taking out of state residents or they uh, they were closed or uh, it was something that I couldn't afford so the bottom line is, um, you know, why Nevada, why here? Well, this is an RV park that I can afford, bottom line. And if I hadn't have come here, I wouldn't have gotten this RV. It has had its issues, I'll grant you that. But again, I, that is okay because Gina and Jeff blessed me in a way that allows me to be able to take care of the issues that the RV is having. So, I, you know, it, People are like, why are you there? Was it the best alternative? For me, at the time, it seemed like the only one. And um, I didn't, you know, hindsight's 2020, uh, but I still don't know where I could have gone that I could have afforded. And uh, also, I, you know, I, I needed to find a home base, and I thought that I, I might um, do that because I, being caught on the road without a place to go is not anything I ever want to happen again. So I'm also doing that. I'm establishing a home base. I have a lovely home. And um, obviously there's been some unexpected developments, good and bad, if you want to label them that way. I'm not really into assigning labels like that to things because every time you think that something's good you find or bad, you think, oh, you find out that something good came of it. And um, so anyway, I, there have been challenges and yes, there are alternatives to the desert. I don't need to be in, uh, you know, nobody should be in the Miami desert in an RV that keeps breaking down an AC that keeps going out. But I hope that answers your question as to why I, I didn't go to the alternatives that are available other than the desert and why I'm here and why I'm still happy about being here now that I have AC. Thank you.